وهو الشهيد والرقيب وهو العليم والخبير والقريب العالم السميع والبصير القادر المقتدر القدير وهو الحكيم المحسن الجبار وهو العزيز القاهر القهار هو المتين المتكبر القوي سبحانه وهو الجميل والحي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد uh, Today we'll talk about the name of Allah القدوس القدوس جل جلاله وتقدست أسماؤه uh, The linguistic meaning of القدوس It has two meanings in the language The first meaning It comes in the scale of فعول Quddus, it comes from Quds. Quds means purity. Wal Qadas bit Tahrik. Qadas, if you put the letter Dal, you put a Haraka. Haraka means either Fatha, Kasra, or Dhamma. If you say Qadas, it means subtle. Subtle in the language of Hijaz. It means bucket because you use the bucket to purify yourself. Bucket of water to purify yourself. So settle means bucket. Uh, so that's the meaning of the word qadas. It came in the Quran. In Surah Al-Baqarah. The angels said, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ As the judge said, the meaning of نُقَدِّسُ لَكَ It means, نُطَهِّرُ أَنفُسَنَا لَكَ We purify ourselves for you. Of course, there's a number of interpretations of this word in this ayah. This is one of the opinions. As you can see here in the translation, they said, while we glorify you. That's also correct. That's another opinion. Actually, the, the widespread opinion is this one. We glorify you with praises. And also, that's why we call it Beitul, Beitul Maqdis. It means a pure house or a place whereby people purify themselves from sin. Al-Farra is a linguist. Al-Farra. He said, Al-Ardu al-Muqaddasatu al-Tahira, a purified land or pure land, is Damascus and Palestine and some parts of Jordan. Ruh al-Quds, Ruh al-Quds, is Jibril. It means the soul of purity. A meaning that he was created from purity. Uh, the second meaning of this word means baraka. Ardul muqaddasa, a blessed, it has baraka. And this is the opinion of Qatada. And Ibn al, Ibn al Arabi went to the same opinion as well. I'm not sure. He said Ibn al Arabi in the book. Uh, I don't know this scholar, but there's another known scholar in Tafsir is called Ibn al-Arabi. So I don't know whether it's a printing mistake or there is another scholar called Ibn al-Arabi. We'll have to research that. Research that. So what strengthened this opinion is Allah, when he mentioned about this land, he said that he is blessed. He said, Subhanallah. He said, 
سبحان الذي أسرى بعبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع البصير Glorified and exalted be he Allah above all that evil they associate with him who took his slave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for a journey by night from Al-Masjid Al-Haram, which is in Mecca, to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa, the neighborhood whereof we have blessed in order that we might show him our ayat, that means proof, evidence, lessons, signs. Verily, he is the all-hearer and all-seer. Um, Al-Quddus, on the wazn of Fu'ul, it is a wazn of Sighatul Mubalagha. Like we said, uh, Al-Malik, when we said Al-Rahman as well, we said Fa'al. These scales, it shows uh, something is the attribute is abundant or it is intensive. So if uh, Quddus is in that scale. This name was mentioned in the Quran twice. Um, sorry, uh, the ayah here that I'm displaying is another ayah actually to prove about the barakah. وَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَلُوطًا إِلَى الْأَرْضِ الَّتِي بَارَكْنَا فِيهَا لِلْعَالَمِينَ And we saved him and Lut to the land that we have blessed. So, actually, the translation that appears in front of you is not correct. Yeah, it's just a uh, typo, but I've just explained it. Okay, so the ayah mentioned in the Quran twice. The, the, the attribute or the name mentioned in the Quran twice. First place, first occurrence is huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-malik al-quddus surah hashr ayah 23 so it means that he is Allah beside whom la ilaha illa huwa none has the right to be worshipped but he the king the holy the one free from all defects so free from all defects here is the translation of al-quddus um, uh, the second ayah is يُسَبِّحُ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ الْمَلِكِ الْقُدُّوسِ الْعَزِيزِ الْحَكِيمِ Surah Jum'ah, ayah number one. As you can see, the ayah was mentioned here as well. Whatsoever is in the heavens, heavens and whatsoever is on the earth glorifies Allah. The King of everything, the Holy, the Almighty, the all wise so the holy he met, he actually translated this one as the holy as you can see when you follow translation they keep interchanging words so al quddus here it was translated as free from all defects or defects here it was translated as the the holy so it can it can be quite confusing but in fact, if you go back to Arabic definitions, it will not be like that. Uh, we'll, I'll mention actually the difference between Tasbih and Quddus further ahead in this uh, translations here. So the meaning of the name with respect to Allah, the meaning of this name with respect to Allah. Qatada said Al-Quddus al mubarak Quddus means it has barakah. Ibn Jarir in, in his tafsir, Ibn Jarir al-Tabari is one of the great mufassirin from uh, early days in the Salaf. Uh, tafsir al-Tabari. He said, وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَك He said that وَنَحْنُ uh, نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكَ It means we negate all negative association negative attributes with respect to you that's what it means 
we negate everything that the people of shirk uh, attribute to you and we worship you so nusabihu is tasbih is to negate all defects with respect to allah all faults with respect to allah to negate them that's called tasbih is actually the opposite we attribute to you everything among your attributes all good attributes positive attributes uh, we actually uh, attribute to you so purity from defects so we attribute to allah purity from faults and defects and also purity from what the non-believers disbelievers attribute to allah so when when we are actually saying that allah is pure from all defects we are actually doing taqdis here tasbih is when we say allah has no defects allah has no faults that's called tasbih so if you are making a negative statement to praise Allah, that's called tasbih. If you make an affirmative statement to praise Allah, it's called taqdis. Uh, Al-Bayhaqi, he said Al-Quddus means pure, At-Tahiru min al-Uyub, pure from vices, uh, also said pure from children, pure from partners. And this is an attribute that Allah de deserves in his that. Al-Ghazali said, Huwa al-munazzahu an kulli wasfin yudrikuhu hissun. His, uh, we negate against him any attribute that we can actually see from our senses or can imagine with our imagination when negating those things. Or we can judge it by our thinking. Ibn Kathir, he said in the meaning of Quddus, He's free from the defects and he's praised or he's been attributed with attributes of completeness. And similar to that, Ash-Shawkani said that. Al-Alusi, he said, Al-Qudus al-Baligu fin nazaha High level of uh, being free from defects, defect shortcomings. Or oh, it means the one who has all completeness in every attribute that is special to him. And we don't know the limit and we cannot imagine. Ibn al-Qayyim in his uh, book of Aqidah and nuniyya he said, "Hada wa min awsafihi al-Qudus wa tanzihi bil-ta'zim lil-Rahmani." As part of his attribute is al-Qudus, uh, the one that has tanzih. Tanzih means is to negate all negatives with greatness. Lil-Rahmani, Rahman. The impact of believing in this name or the consequence or the effects of believing in this name. Uh, the effect of believing in this name, um, it means التقديس, التقديس If we believe in this name, of course we should believe in this name. The effect is that we will praise Allah with all complete attributes and names and we will negate all faults and defects and that he is his god or we describe him with every completeness and attributes of completeness and these attributes are everything that he described himself in his book or what his prophet described him with tanzih doesn't mean negating his real attributes 
or negating the meaning of his names, like the Jahmiya and Mu'tazila think, and those who are similar among the deviant sects. But Tanzih means is to negate to negate the, uh, him being similar to creation. That what that what is Tanzih. Like Allah said, ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير. ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير. Okay. So, so he said that uh, there is nothing like him, and he is the all hearer and the all seer. Uh, the Ahlul Sunnah, when they do Tanzih, they don't negate what is what his real attribute. They don't negate it. And when Ahlul Sunnah as well affirm. They don't affirm with comparison. The ayah that we just mentioned here, it contains the Tanzih here, because he says, There's no one like him. So, so that is Tanzih. This is Ithbat. We're affirming that Allah is all hearer and all seer, but our Ithbat, our affirmation, our affirmation is without comparison. Um, uh, another one is that every, every negation with regards to Allah, when we are negating some attributes uh, from Allah, it has to have in it, or the main purpose behind it, is to prove the completeness of the opposite, the opposite of that negation. For example, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ It says, and your Lord is not at all unjust to his slaves. Surah Fusilat 46, Ayah 46. So Allah is not all unjust. I mean, ظَلَّامِ means oppressor actually. So I don't know why some trans translation says unjust. There could be slight difference here. I've seen some translation as well. He's not a tyrant. So in Arabic, actually, if someone is oppressor, they say zalim. So zalam is sigha mubalagha. Is on the scale of ar-Rahman. Can you see? Your Lord is not overly an oppressor. And uh, as you can see, someone may ask, he's negating to be overly an oppressor. So does, where is he negating that he's oppressive, uh, that he's an oppressor? Where is he negating? This ayah is not really negating that. Anyway, Sheikh uh, Shankiti in his book, al adwa Al-Bayan, he answered this. He said, this can be answered in t three different ways. The first answer is that Allah said in other ayahs that he does not oppress anyone. He also said, In Allah, Allah does not oppress even uh, like a small thing like dharra. Dharra, something very small. So now we can compare it to an atom. So it also in another hadith, Allah said, I made a zulm, I made oppression haram for me. So those are, make it very clear. Also, another answer is that Allah has said al-abid. He said slaves. Slaves, there are many. Allah, all the hum humanity, his creation are his slaves. And there are so many. So if you oppress, let's say, if Allah oppress each of them a little bit, if you add up, it will become a lot of oppression. So he's, he used this one it's just to match the plural. Uh, also, in another way, as well linguistically, uh, if you check the advanced Arabic grammar books, they mention that this sigha also has another meaning. They call it nisba. So the lamin, he's not someone who has, or we can attribute oppression. 
So the lam actually doesn't mean adjective here. It means uh, an attribution. Someone who has oppression. So he's not someone who has oppression uh, against his slaves. So uh, those are the three answers. Uh, also, as you can see here, when we negate oppression against Allah, we are actually, or oh, the main intention is to prove how just he is. Just means ad adil, adil. So to, to emphasize on his adil by using this negation. So any negation, uh, when we're discussing about Allah, the main intention is to prove the opposite, the complete opposite, which is praiseworthy. But uh, there's no much negation, actually, when Allah is describing himself, only in certain places. In general, by default, we just affirm attributes to Allah. That's the general uh, default. Sometimes you see negation when we're describing Allah, and the main intention is to prove the complete opposite. The complete opposite has to be a praise. But uh, normal neg negation when describing Allah, if the, if the opposite has no benefit of praising, then that kind of negation is not normal. So uh, the Sheikh said, mahdu fala kamala fihi wa huwa is actually not recommended. It, it is disliked to describe Allah with negation if he doesn't have any praise in the opposite of it. Like saying Allah has no direction. There are some people who say things like that. Not in a particular direction or something like that. So Al-Halimi said Al-Quddus, it means the one who's been praised with good attributes. And, and also Taqdis is part of the meaning of Tasbih. Because Tasbih, also Tasbih is part of the meaning of Taqdis. Because to negate the faults, when you're negating faults, you're actually proving the praise. So uh, a tasbih is to negate faults. When you're negating fault, you're actually also praising. Okay, taqdis is to affirm praise. When you're doing taqdis, when you're affirming praise, you are implying that he has no faults. So they're so related, a tasbih and taqdis. Uh, for example, another meaning as well. When you say, la sharika la, he has no partner. Wala there's no one like him. You're actually affirming that he's one. When you say La there's nothing that he can't, he is not able to do. You're actually proving that he's most able. He's very able and strong. Uh, when you say that he doesn't oppress anyone, you are proving that he is just in his ruling. Uh, Allah has has uh, has actually combined these two meanings in Surah Al-Ikhlas. He said, "Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu samad." Yeah, he said, "Oh, oh, Muhammad, say he is Allah, the One, Allahu samad, Allah, the self-sufficient Master, whom all." creatures need this actually is uh is taqdis because we're praising him we're affirming our praise so this is taqdis and then he said Lam yalid wa lam yulad. he begets not nor was he begot begotten wa lam yakul lahu kufwan ahad. and there's none co-equal or comparable comparable unto him so now here, this is Tasbih. And uh, the two matters here is going back to oneness of Allah and negation of partners. Uh, just as much as he's 
free from defects, faults in his uh, attributes and his beautiful names. He's also free from faults and defects in his sayings and in his deeds, in his actions. When, he's, when Allah speaks, he speaks the truth and the statements are true. Allah said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa la yajma'annakum ila yawm al-qiyamati la rayba fih wa man asdaqu min Allahi haditha He said that uh, and who is truer in statement than Allah And another ayah this is uh, surah an-nisa 87 another ayah he said wa tammat kalimatu rabbika sidqan wa 'adla and the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. And his actions as well are free from mistakes and forgetfulness or and other things among defects. وَتَمَّتْ كَلِمَةُ رَبِّكَ صِدْقًا وَعَدْلًا We mentioned that, yes. Okay. And Allah said, that uh, in another ayah, Afa Hasibitum Annama Holakonakum Abatha Wanakum Elena La Turjaun. Did you think that we had created you in play, meaning without any purpose, and that you wouldn't be brought back to us? فَتَعَالَى اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقُّ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا هُوَ رَبُّ الْعَرْشِ الْكَرِيمِ So exalted be Allah, the true king, لا إله إلا هو. No, none, none has a right to be worshipped but he, the Lord of Supreme Throne. So, as you can see, Allah is great and he is uh, has got all the complete attributes and free from creating. He doesn't create anything without purpose. So he is actually we doing taqdis now in his actions. And before we start another name, we still have a few things to go through. The Prophet وسلم, he used to mention this name in his ruku and sujood. It was narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha and the Prophet وسلم, used to in his record is to say Subuhun Qudus Rab Suduhun Subuhun Qudus Rabbul Mala Ikati wa Ruh. And also when he used to finish Witr, he used to that is Sahih Muslim, this hadith from Sahih Muslim. And in another hadith, the Prophet used to read Sabbi Hisma Rabbika Ala in Witr, Anukul Yahi al Kafirun, Anukul Hu Allahu Ahad. And when he is to give salam from the prayer, he used to say Subhan al Malik al Quddus three times. As you can see, Sabih Isma is the Sabih, Surah Al A'la. Qul ya ayyuhal kafirun. This is Tawheed, is uh, talking about worship. La ilaha illallah, the meaning of La ilaha illallah. And then Qul huwa Allah, combine Taqdis and Tasbih. And this he used to say Subhan al Malik al Quddus. So this is the end of this name. We'll go to the next name. As-Salam. Jalla Jalaluhu wa taqaddasat asma'u. The meaning, the linguistic meaning is al-bara'a. It's to be free from something. Free. Al-bara'a wa tasallamu minhu. Tabarra. Ibn al-Arabi, he said, as-salama al-afiyah. It means health. In Arabic, we use the word as-salama, like we also use as-siha. As-siha means health. But as-salama also can be, we use it in place of health, but we don't, we don't actually mean health. It means free from disease. So it doesn't really mean health as a positive. It's the absence of something, absence of disease. وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامَا if the and when the foolish address them with bad words, they reply back with mild words of gentleness. Surah Furqan 63. Here, Salaman 
it means uh, to be free, to be free. But um, here they say something that is free, not free. I mean, you don't have to pay. Free from something. Free from what? Uh, free from any problem. They say something, salaman, something which is free from any harm. That's why uh, we in the Jannah, we call it Darus Salam, Jannah. It doesn't have problems. Afa. It means that the one who, it says, what, what is it? Was ala man al huda. In this ayah, was salamu ala man al huda. And peace be upon him who follows guidance. Of course, uh, if you look at translation, you see all sort of all sorts of words, but the true meaning here was salamu. If you look at the description in Arabic, uh, it means the one who followed the guidance is free from Allah's anger and Allah's punishments. So as salamu, free to be free from something. So yeah, it depends in the context what you are free from. So here, free from punishments and anger. Al Razi said. As well as sawabu min al summiya salama. If you say correct words, if you choose the, the appropriate words to answer someone, that means you have said salam. That's why I said, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا If the foolish address them with bad words, they reply back with mild words of gentleness. Salama here in this context, it means the, their words, their reply is free from vice and sin. So their words are free from, they don't have, they're not using any bad words. It doesn't mean they're saying salam. It means they reply with something that is free from any harm. So they don't reply back with bad words. Uh, when a Muslim tells his uh, Muslim brother, Assalamu alaikum. It is as if he's telling him that on my side, I'm free from problems, free from bad feelings about you, free from evil, hate, or there's no war bet between us. That's what it means. And uh, in the Quran, Salam was only mentioned once. The king, the holy, the one free from all defects, the giver of security. The king, the holy. Okay, so the Al Qudus was translated as the holy now, yeah? The one free from all defects, as salam was described like that. So, okay, as Surah Hashr, Ayah 23. The meaning of this name with regards to Allah. It means to be free from all vices and false defects because Allah is complete in his that and his attributes and his actions. Al-Alusi in his tafsir say, As-salam wudu salamati min kulli naqsin wa afa. As-salam means free from all faults and defects. Al-Bayhaqi said the same thing as well. Also, it was said, there's another opinion. It was said. When they say it was said, it means like we don't know who said it or it's not very important or it might be weak opinion. It was said that he's the one who believers are free from his punishment. Al-Qurtubi, he said he's free from negatives and also he Ibn al-Arabi narrated that he said اتفق العلماء رحمة الله عليهم على أن معنى قولنا في الله السلام النسبة The scholars have agreed that when we say السلام it means we're using actually we are intending a nisba. In Arabic language grammar there is a chapter called a nisba. So because السلام is actually a, a gerund you cannot use a gerund to describe someone. So when we say calling Allah as salam, what do we mean by as salam? So, for example, you cannot say this person is generosity. 
we cannot use generosity as an adjective because it's actually a gerund. So a salam is also a gerund. So the intention here is to say the salam, the one who has salam. So the owner of salam. Yeah, you cannot describe someone as peace. He is peace, but you could say he has peace or he gives peace. So the scholars are commenting on this. They say it means an nisbah here. Taqdiruhu dhu salama. He has salama. And then the, they have disagreed on translation or attribution of this nisbah on three opinions. One opinion says that, first opinion, it means the one who is free from all vices and free from defects and faults. The second opinion, it means the one who has salam, the one who will give salam to his slaves in Jannah. Like Allah said, salamun qawlan min rabbir rahim. Peace be upon you, a word from the Lord, most merciful. Surah Yasin 58. The third meaning, it means that the, the creation are free from his oppression. These are three opinions. And the Al-Qurtubi, after narrating all the three opinions. So Al-Qurtubi actually narrated from Ibn al-Arabi all these three opinions. And then he said now, Al-Qurtubi, he said that I am saying, I'm going with this opinion. We're going to mention which opinion, yeah? I'm going with this opinion, and this is the opinion of Al-Khattabi. Uh, yeah, the last opinion. وَالَّذِي قَوْلُ قَبْلَهُ يَكُونُ صِفَةُ فِعْلِ Yes. Uh, this opinion, the third one, and the second one, they are attributes of actions. Just like Ar-Rahim, we said that is an attribute of action. Ar-Rahman is a sifa dhatiya. So here uh, is attribute of action. The last two, the last two opinions are attributes of action. But the first opinion is an attribute of to himself. So three opinions here. Uh, the first one is just sifa to that. Now, also, Ibn Qayyim in his Nuniya he said, وَهُوَ السَّلَامُ عَلَى الْحَقِيقَةِ سَالِمٌ مِنْ كُلِّ تَمْثِيلِ وَمِنْ نُقْصَانِ He's explaining as salam, Ibn Qayyim. He said, in the reality, it means salim, when he's free from كُلِّ تَمْثِيلٍ any comparison or in any defects. Actually, I just remember the last lesson as well, we had attribute of action and attribute of... Uh, only attributed to Allah. Uh, was it Al-Malik? Al-Malik and Al-Malik. One of them, according to one of the opinions, was an attribute of action. And in a previous lesson, Al-Rahman Al-Rahim. Yes, Al-Malik is an attribute of action. Al-Malik is a sifa dhatiya. So these three consecutive lessons, we had this comparison. Sifa dhatiya and sifa Fi'liya. The effects of this name, believing in this name. What are they? The first one is that Allah, as salam, is free from all defects, vices, or faults. It is meaning is very close to Al Qudus. So there's another opinion that says Al Qudus is referring to him being free from all defects in the past and present. And as salam is referring to the future. In future, he won't have any, no defects could uh, happen on him. So as salam is to do with future. Um, the second one is that the second effect of believing in this is Allah, he's the one who's going to greet his uh, slaves in Jannah. 
he would say khalidina fiha bi idhni rabbihim tahiyyatuhum fiha salam and to dwell there in forever in paradise with the permission of their lord their greeting therein their greeting therein will be salam okay so this is a greeting by allah and uh, as well, uh, in another ayah, تَحِيَّتُهُمْ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ سَلَامٌ وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ أَجْرًا كَرِيمًا Their greeting on the day they shall meet him will be salam. And angels will say to them, salamun alaykum. And he has prepared for them a generous reward in paradise. Surah Ahzab 44. So, Allah gives salam. And also, salamun qawla min rabbir rahim. The one that we mentioned earlier, Surah Yasin 58. So Allah greets his slaves in Jannah by giving salam. And Jannah is Darus Salam. They call it Darus Salam because it's free from death or disease or diseases or other defects. Allah said, Lahum Darus Salam. And for them will be the home of peace. As you can see in English, they always say salam peace peace is correct but salam has more a broader meaning than just peace peace is absence of war absence of war but uh, a salam is absence of all problems so yeah home of peace with the lord and also allah said wallahu yad'u ila dar salam allah calls to the home of peace uh, and uh, he guides he guides whoever he wants to the correct uh, path all right so another effect of believing in this name is uh, because of the, it means that uh, he greets his prophets. He greets them. He greets the prophets, yes. Because uh, he said, Salamun ala Nuhim fil alameen. Peace be upon Nuh. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Salamun ala Musa wa Harun. Salamun ala Ilyasin. Wa salamun ala al Mursaleen. And he said, Wa qulil hamdulillahi wa salamun ala ibadihi alladhina astafa. He also greets his slaves. Al-Khattab said, I was told by Ahmed ibn Ibrahim ibn Malik that Musa bin Ishaq al-Ansari, he narrated from Sadaqa bin al-Fadl. He said, I had Sufyan ibn Uyena, a creation, you know, the creation, sometimes they, they feel uh, in fear. But the three occasions that a creation or a, a creature, a creature, creature would be in fear, is when he is born. And he, when he dies and when he is resurrected. When he's born because he sees himself, he sees himself or herself coming out from where he was. So the creature sees itself coming out from where it was, like you know, from the from the mother's womb, and it feels fear. Where did I where am I now? Uh, in another in a, uh, another occasion is when he when the person dies or creature uh, yeah, because he will see people that he hasn't seen in the grave maybe in the grave of course yeah he will see people who hasn't seen also and the day he's he or she is gets re resurrected. They see themselves in uh, Mahshar, where everyone is gathered together. So these, these three places are a source of fear. And Allah has done ikram to Yahya. And he saved him from all these three things by saying, Peace on him on the day he was born, the day that he dies, and the day that he will be raised to life 
Surah Maryam, Ayah 15. Uh, same thing. Uh, the angels also greet uh, greeting the Allah slaves. Alladina tatawafa when they are dying actually. Alladina tatawafa humul mala. Alladina tatawafa humul malaikatu tayibin. Yaquluna salamun alaykum. Those who those who lives the angels takes while they are those whose lives the angels take while they are in a pious state and uh, saying to them salamun alaykum and uh, that's the end of the powerpoint we'll explain other more points the we should actually from this name we should actually spread the salam uh, giving salam is the reason to enter jannah the Prophet ﷺ said, لا تدخل الجنة حتى تؤمنوا ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا. You will not, you shall not enter Jannah until you believe, and you won't believe until you love each other. ألا أولا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تحاببتم. Shall I not show you something if you do, you love each other? أفشو السلام بينكم. Spread the salam among you. Imam Nawawi said, uh, this is actually encouragement to spread salam to all the Muslims, those you know and those you don't know. Anusul Salam is one of the reasons for people to be together, to, to bond together, unity. And uh, it also uh, makes someone, you know, be humble and respect uh, the others. Also, it is one of the distinguishing symbol signs or characters of uh, this religion many people they uh, neglect this they neglect and is one of the things that the prophet calls to it he calls to it it was narrated by abdullah bin salam abdullah bin salam he was uh, a jewish a jewish scholar he reverted to islam he said when i came to medina that that was i think he before before he was a muslim he said, when the Prophet ﷺ arrived in Medina, many people went to him. And I was looking at him. And, and then I knew that his face didn't look like a liar. And the first thing I heard from his speech, he said, Oh people, spread salam. Feed people. Feed, people feed them the food and pray at night while people are sleeping you will enter jannah with salam so we should not uh, another thing is as well we shouldn't say salam on allah we don't give salam to allah because he is salam there's a hadith ibn mas'ud he said kunna nusalli khalf al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallama and we used to say assalamu ala allah Salam on Allah. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah is salam. We should say at tahiyatu lillahi wa salawatu wa tayyibatu as-salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu as-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi as-salihina ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. This is hadith sahih narrated by Imam Ahmad and he said it's authenticated and Ibn Majah and Ad-Darimi Actually, this is that the shahu that we read in Salah. And from what I heard the scholars say, this is actually the most authentic narration of uh, the shahud narrated by Ibn Mas'ud. Al-Baydai Al said that uh, to greet Allah with Salam is not possible because he is Salam. Salam is from him and uh, mercy, mercy is from him and, and he is. So we shouldn't say assalam on Allah. We should say is belong belongs to Allah. Attahiyatu lillahi. Also, there was another narration that uh actually means uh, greeting. Every king had their own special greeting. But when you say attahiyatu lillahi means all types of greeting of salam belong to Allah. And so 
uh, Jibreel, he told the Prophet Sallallahu Allah, Allah is greeting Khadija. And Khadija responded, she said, In Allah huwa salamu, wa ala Jibreel salam, wa alayka ya Rasulullah salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Khadija knew that Allah, she cannot greet Allah. So she said, Allah is salam, and on Jibreel, I'm sending salam to Jibreel and to you, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the scholars say that in this narration, in this story, it shows that Khadija, radiallahu anha, she had a lot of fiqh. That's why she didn't say wa alayhi salam when she received the salam from Allah. She, uh, so she said as salam, she didn't say as salam wa alayhi, uh, like the Sahaba said. So Khadija knew what to say. And as salam is a name among the names of Allah. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سميتها بالروح والريحان في نظم أسمى ربنا الرحمن أبدأ بسم الله أبدأ بسم الله ربي الأحد الواحد السيد والوتر الصمد بنظم أسماء الإله الحق مصليا على إمام الخلق